can help me or not. Don't guess he's gonna help me. What's up everyone? Welcome to a video here on the LS Blue YouTube channel. Today's video, I'm gonna give you a couple little tips that you can do for your S10 to help you stop better. And I'm also gonna go over the S10 suspension and the wheels and tires because I have a couple people asking about my, what wheel and tire setup I have. I'll go over these and the previous ones that I had, these here. So if you have any questions, this video will answer those questions. So let's jump up into it. If you've seen any of my videos, you know I do a lot of drag racing. And if you've ever done any drag racing, then you know that it's more important to stop the vehicle than it is to accelerate. The factory brakes will get the job done, but the Blazer brake swap is a cheap little upgrade that you can do that makes your braking a lot more effective and efficient. Especially if you plan to drag race or do autocross and don't have the money to go out and buy a big brake kit. Now what I'm talking about doing is the 98 and up two-wheel drive Blazer brake swap. This is, um, it's a very easy and straightforward direct bolt-on swap that you can do for your S10. Um, you can go to a junkyard on a $50 all-you-can-carry day and get all the parts that you need. Now some of them might need to be replaced for wear and tear like rotors or calipers if the calipers don't work and brake pads. But everything else is direct bolt-on. Let me back the truck out and get it up on the jack and get the tire off so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about doing. So I picked up this cheap jack from O'Reilly's and some cheap jack stands from Walmart because I don't have anything to work on here with at the house. And it's not like I really should be doing this anyways, but surgery's in a couple days, so let's get some, let's get a video out. Now in my opinion of doing this, there are four major benefits that you get from doing this brake swap. Number one, you get a larger dual piston caliper. Now the obvious reason is you get two pistons in your caliper which allows for more brake pressure and you can run a larger pad which is the brake pads from the blazer. Number two, it is a larger diameter brake rotor which is obviously going to help with heat dissipation and is going to help with braking. Number three, you no longer have the hub style brake rotor. The bearing is not made to go into the brake rotor. It is a bolt in bearing and you don't have to worry about packing packing with grease in the bearing you don't have to worry about taking the nut off and then yanking the brake rotor and bearings off of the spindle you just the brake caliper comes off and then the rotor it's very simple and it's very easy to change brakes and number four number four is not really a make or break deal when it comes to the swap it just is a real big benefit um, when you do it you obviously have to take your ball joints loose and you have to take your tie rods loose and your brake lines. In doing that, you're going to disturb the shank on each ball joint and the tie rod. So if you have to change ball joints or a tie rod down the line, well, you don't have to worry about beat banging on it and having to heat it up with a torch. If you put a little anti-seize or grease on when you go back together with the brake swap, you won't have anything to worry about and it's a good chance to also freshen your brakes up, make sure you got all new bearings, all new brakes and everything up front. So you're good to go. Truck's jacked up, wheels off of it, and let's look and see what we got. This is what the Blazer brake swap looks like on your two-wheel drive S10. Now what it does is you change out the factory spindle for the Blazer spindle. So you, when you go to the junkyard, you need the spindle itself, the brake rotor, the brake caliper, the caliper bracket, and the hub bearing. You don't need anything else other than those components. It is a direct fit and there is no modifications that have to be done whatsoever in order to make this work. It's very easy and straightforward. All you do is take your castle nut here loose. You take your castle nut there loose for your ball joint right there. And then you take that one loose and you knock them all out. You knock this loose and it comes off and you obviously have to take your brake line off and it this will fall off and then you install your new one the exact same way you don't have to get an alignment or at least I didn't 
Let me make this clear before anybody asks in the comment. If you have lowering spindles on your S10 or Sonoma or whatever, and you install these spindles here, your truck will be raised back up to factory height. These are factory ride height spindles. Now if you have a lowering spring on the front, then you're good. You don't have to worry about that. It's not going to throw your alignment off by doing this swap, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you have lowering spindles, it will be put back to factory ride height. Now some people might be okay with factory ride height. Mine is factory SS ride height, which is like lowered inch and a half, two inches. All right, we're done with the brake swap. Let's move over to discussing the wheel and tire and the suspension setup real quick. So as you can see here in the front, I have no sway bar. My sway bar actually has not been cut off yet. I have the factory coil spring there, along with factory control arms and Calvert Racing 9010 front shocks. Boom, the tire's back on. In the front here, we have a 15 by four Weld RT with a Nexon 165-80R15 tire. It's pretty much a, I guess, a, your basic skinny tire. And in the rear, we also have Weld RTs, but these are the 15 by 9.33 with like, I think, four and a half back spacing. Do not quote me on that because I am unsure. I did not buy these wheels new. I traded them for my Ramblers. They are 27 inch by 1150 15 Hoosier Quick Time Pros. We'll be switching over to the 28 inch regular Hoosier Slicks in the future. Now let's crawl under here. You'll have to please forgive the rusty mess this truck. You'll have to please forgive the rusty mess. This truck was a daily driver for a while in the snow. On the rear we have factory leaf springs with the helper spring removed and the bump stops removed. We have single adjustable QA1 shocks with extensions made and we also have cow tracks. It's a very simple very very simple setup. Oh and I can't forget the 9 inch obviously. It's a very very simple setup that is very effective. In the rear we are uh, limited with our front but that's gonna change whenever I get back in action. Now the old wheels that I used to have that I actually traded for these were US Mag Ramblers. They were 18 by eights in the front and 18 by nine and a half in the rear. I don't remember the tire size right now, but I will leave it right here. They were very heavy and once I got rid of those, I noticed a, a drastic gain with my eighth mile time. But that's gonna be all for this video. Make sure you guys drop a like, comment, share this video. Subscribe and we'll see it.